Okay, so session one, general nautical terminology. Um, as I say, you might find a lot of this you know or have known, but you might find it a nice reminder. And I think it's a nice, gentle way to start into the sessions um, as we go ahead. So we'll talk about what the hull, the low decks, the rig and parts of it, the sails, what happens at the top of the rig, your masthead, and then obviously points of sail, and then we'll just go through a quick summary and we'll throw a bit of a quiz in at the end as well. We'll try and make it interactive as well. Not that you're going to be tested, it's just interaction's a bit of fun. Okay, so hulls. There are hundreds of different types, but they all have a few things in common. The first one being any keel bolt boat has a keel. Okay. Various shapes and sizes, but keel boats like we sail on, have keels. Okay, and even some of the cats in the world have keels. A lot of keels will have a bulb or a shoe at the bottom, just to keep more weight further down. So if you look at our clipper boats, they've actually got quite a big bulb at the bottom of their keel. Okay, so if we look at different types, a fin keel, or long keel, then you've got a fin not as big, you've got keels going either side, you see these quite regularly where the tie goes out, so the boat can actually sit on this flat. Then you've got centerboard keels where they lift and drop, lift and drop, and you've got skeg keels, and lots of other types. So literally when we're talking about a keel, we're talking about the weighted section of the boat at the bottom, or down here, where on a, on a where it doesn't have a, a deep section like a power boat, it's the it's the cutting edge along the bottom of the boat, is your keel. It's the very bottom of the boat. Okay, the rudder. We all know the rudder at the back of the boat. Uh, again, loads and loads of different types. You get some that are actually hung on the back of the boat, some that are underneath the boat. Our clipper boats have actually got two rudders which I'm sure you know. So loads of different types. Okay, so if we're talking about the hull as a whole, we're talking about the hull, which is generally referred to as below the waterline. Okay, when we refer to above the waterline, we tend to refer to it as top sides or freeboard. So although the whole boat makes up the hull, the hull actually just tends to be more below waterline Whereas your top sides and your freeboard tend to make up the top of it. Underneath the hull, down the bottom here, you've got your shaft and propeller. It might be a shaft, there are different types. And a folding propeller in this case. Okay, lots of types of propellers. Folding, fixed, double bladed, four blades, two blades, three blades. So we're not going to go into much, too much detail on them. So that if you're doing any propellers, there are lots and lots and lots of types of prop. The ones that we have on the clipper boats are folding propellers. And they're a brand, if I'm open to correction, but I believe they're gory props. Okay. What holds the shaft in place? It's called a P bracket. All that does is basically it stops it spinning and running away from itself. It's just a bearing holder. Okay. And then we've got anodes. And we'll talk a bit more about anodes. Okay. Anodes are a zinc alloy that allows it, it made to deteriorate. So instead of your engine rusting or your shaft rusting or parts of your boat rusting, the anodes are made to disappear and rust for you. So other damage isn't done to your boat. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes for all different boats. Okay. The idea is they burn away. Instead of, for instance, your engine burning away, your anode burns away, you take the broken one away, you put new ones on. Okay, so here's a, a sail drive type prop system 
and you can see there's an anode fitted onto it. So all the metal work doesn't disappear, the anode disappears. Now they have to be replaced reasonably regularly. The boats with uh, different materials, for instance, aluminium boats, because there's more metal work on them, they require more anodes to stop damage. Okay, if we're looking at the hull from above, there's a lot of terms here that we should know. Port side, starboard side, general ones. Um, but there's a couple that I noticed that we didn't use terribly heavily on our clipper, clipper boats. So I'm going to point a couple out. The quarters. We never really spoke about the port quarter or starboard quarter. We just used to talk about where we store things down the alleyways and things. So you'd actually therefore be talking about your quarters. They're the back quarter of the boat. And in the same vein, we never really spoke about the port or starboard bow. And it's quite a useful one. If somebody says to you, we're going to put a spinnaker up, can we have the bag on the starboard bow? We can then work out that we want it somewhere here. So they're quite a useful um, piece of terminology when you're sailing. Um, we spoke about bow, we spoke about stern, port, starboard a lot, but we never actually used really port quarter and port or starboard bow. Okay, names of bits above the water, if we go for a look at that. Above the, so we start with transom the very, very, very back of the boat. The push bit is the back of your metal railing. There's two sides on this one. There's one there and there's one there. It could be all fixed piece. We have them on, on our clipper boats. A way of remembering these, if you look at the front, and I'll get to it now, there is something called a pulpit. So you push a boat from the back, you pull it from the front. So you can remember push pits at the back by pushing it from the back, you pull it from the front. Your cockpit, that's the area where you control the vessel from. Your helm station, well, that's, we all know exactly what those are. Main sheet winches, in the, in our case, we have one central main sheet winch. In this case, it's got two, one on either side. So they still do the same job. Genoa winches, just smaller than the ones we use. They do exactly the same job though. Companion way, the entrance to where you go below. Coach roof, it's above your saloon. Your deck is the surrounding area along the top here. Because this is the coach roof, these are obviously called coach roof winches or halyard winches. Now we don't have our, our uh, halyard winches up there. We have them down here because our halyards run along underneath. This boat has its halyards running on top, so it has coach roof winches. Okay, a van. We don't have a van anymore, but it's a gas strut that basically holds the boom up. Repeaters, they're instruments at the front of the mast, which the whole crew can see. And there's our pulpit, as I mentioned in the beginning. So you push from a, push the boat from the back. So it's a push pit. You pull the boat from the front pulpit. That's the metal work, not the guardrails or the stanchions. That's the solid metal at the front, as opposed to the guardrail and stanchions. Okay, below decks. Okay. So I think we all know the saloon. 
We all know that our kitchen is called a galley. Nice to see a nice tidy galley on Bermuda, you see? Now that's also on Bermuda, of course, you know. <laughs> now, bedrooms are called cabins. Little bedrooms are called cabins. And your bed itself is called a berth. That looks form of more familiar, doesn't it? Not this five-star rubbish that other people have. We want real boats, don't we? Okay, a wall. A wall below decks is called a bulkhead. And your ceiling is called a deckhead. It's probably because you smack your head on the deck so on the up and outside of the deck so often. Okay, and then I hopefully everybody knows that a head, a toilet is called a head. Does anybody know why it's called a head? Here's an interesting fact. On the Golden Hyde, on Sir Francis Drake's boat, right at the front of the boat, he had a section of slats with open gaps. And that's where his crew went, right to the head of the boat to do their business. And since then, that's why the head has been called the head. So the term actually comes from Sir Francis, Sir Francis Drake's boat, the Golden Knight. Piece of history. Um, okay, so obviously there are lots and lots of other names, but these are the most common ones we'll use on our boats. Um, and any others that you think we should add, let us know. But I think these are the most common ones that we use on, on Dolma Tripper boats. Okay, so rigs. Again, lots of different types. You know, there's ours. There's an America's Cup, you know. So let's go through the bits and pieces of them. Four stay. That's the stay that holds the rig up right at the front of the boat. The back stay, that's exactly the reverse. In this picture, there's just one. Some boats have two. They're still back stays. They still do the same job. Okay. Your cap shroud. That's the, the, the shrouds or the stays that go up on the outside from the middle of the boat. Okay. The ones that don't go the whole way up are called lowers or inners or Ds. Okay. Depending on exactly how they laid out. So your cap shroud goes all the way to the top. The others don't. The spreaders or we'll keep your shrouds apart. Your chain plates are what hold the shrouds in place as well as the forestay and backstay. So they're big chunks of metal, big chunks of metal. They're bolted through the hull and they hold the whole lot in place. So here your shrouds going up and the whole lot is held on by big chunks of metal. Okay, so if we look at shrouds on a big boat, this is a, I'm just using this example, okay? So these shrouds run from here all the way up to the top there, okay? Then there's Ds, lots and lots and lots of Ds. They're going from outside to in, outside to in, outside to in, starting at the bottom, one up to four at the top on this particular boat. And then right at the top, you've got a little diamond rig specific to this boat, but I thought I'd mention it. So you can see a little diamond rig at the top. So your cap shroud stop just below that spreader for the diamond rig. Okay. So what we've got is just shrouds that go to the top. We don't have the diamond on top. And if you really want to get complicated, you can start learning like tall ships rigging that's just the forward rigging on a tall ship and if you sail these chaps you've got to know them all so plenty of homework if you want to start sailing tall ships okay our sails okay so if we look at our sails with the bow to the right of the screen this is a mainsail so here's our master roughly where i'm still moving the mouse up and down yeah, and here's our boom. So, the head. 
top of the sail where the main halyard pulls it up. That's your head. Your tack, that's the fixed point in the corner, right where the boom meets the mast. And then your clue is where, right at the end of your boom. So these terms, tack, head and clue, work on every single sail. The luff is your leading edge, leech, trailing edge. And then foot is the bottom of your sail. Again, those three terms work on all sails. Your main halyard is what pulls up your mainsail and it pulls it up on the head. Your outhaul is what pulls the clue out along the boom. And your cunningham is what pulls the tack either down or forward, depending on the layout for it. Your main sheet is obviously how you control where the boom lies. And your boom vang or kicker is what controls the height of the boom moving up and down. Telltales are little pieces of string that allow us to see what the sail is doing and how the air is flowing over it. Our reefing cringles is how we reduce mainsail area if we need to. So if we look at a Genoa in a bit more detail again, now this is obviously the mast is this side now. Our tack is fixed right at the front of the boat. We have exactly the same thing. We have the head, the tack and the clue. They're exactly the same. We have a luff, a leech and a foot. So it's exactly the same terms as a mainsail. We have a jib halyard and a jib sheet where we had a main halyard and a main sheet. So we use the same terminology. We have telltales in our jibs as well. So if you look at a boat in reality, you've got two heads, two tacks, two clues, two luffs, two leeches. We have battens in our sails as well. They're basically pieces of rigid, sort of either fiberglass, carbon, something like that, that help keep the shape of the sail and prevent it from being damaged. And we have them sometimes in Genoa's as well. Okay. Again, these are the ones that we see on our boat. If you climb onto a boat with multiple masts, there are additional names and things like that. So if you've heard additional names, don't worry about it. But in reality, the only ones that we're really going to work with are the ones we've just been through. Okay. But that is still a luff, the leading edge. That is still a leech, the trailing edge. And these are still all foot, foot, foot. These are all tax, tax, tax. And at the working end, the moving end, they're all still clues. So those names translate to all sales. Okay, so what do we got at the top of the rig, the masthead? I know a lot of you haven't been up there. Some of you might have. Okay, so we start at the front, spinnaker sheaves. That's what we pull. When we pull a spinnaker up, it goes all the way to the top and it stops at these sheaves, these blocks. Okay, this particular picture has them on the outside. We have the same system. We have blocks on the outside. Okay. The jib sheaves go into the mast. So you see how the rope comes up and disappears. Whereas with the spinnaker, the rope comes up and comes down the outside. The jib goes into the mast. Okay. Right at the top. You've got a hawk. A lot of people call it Windex just because it's a brand and it's without fail the most common brand in the world. The technical word for it is hawk, but a lot of them people call it a Windex. It basically points towards where the wind's coming from. So that'll point to where the wind is coming from. Okay, we obviously have our lights, our navigational lights up there. The tricolor. 
anchor light. We have our aerials, VHF. And we have on the clipper boats what's called an Echo Max. And it's basically a very strong radar reflector, electronic radar reflector. The crane. Crane is this metal piece that I'm looking at here. And it's the piece that sticks out the back of the mast where your backstay is fitted to. It allows a gap between your backstay and your mast so you can put a sail in there, namely your mainsail. The bigger the crane, the bigger the gap, the more mainsail you can have in there. So there's quite a big crane. This is a backstay flicker. So when your sail is bigger than the space provided by the backstay, you literally have a flicker that'll lift the backstay out the way. So you don't damage your sail every time your sail comes past. We have instruments. So the instruments tell us the wind direction and speed. It looks something like that. As in animal so these little things will spin around and tell us wind speed. And this little thing will twist in the direction of the wind and tell us the wind direction. Yeah. So as you can see, there's quite a few bits and pieces at the top of a rig. So this is why we go up. One of the reasons we go up is check them all, make sure they're all good. Okay, points of sale. Okay, a lot of you should be very familiar with this, but we'll go through it. Points of sale, head to wind. So if the wind direction is coming from the top of your screen, as you see there, okay, this is for hoisting and dropping and it pretty much stops the boat, puts the boat in irons. You're not sailing at that point of sail. Okay, close hauled. This is those, when the whole boat leans over and everybody turns green and it's horribly bumpy and it's wet and nobody's happy and they're sliding around down below, but it's as close to the wind as you can get. So if you're trying to achieve a direction up here, it's the way you do it. Okay, the close reach, things are getting a bit freer. Note where the sails are close hauled. Note where the sails are in a close reach. They've been freed up slightly. Okay, so things are getting a bit better. It's getting a bit flatter. The wind's more on the beam and it's getting a bit faster. And it's a lot more comfortable sailing. This can also be known as a fine reach. Close reach or a fine reach. Beam reach. Very fast, lots of fun. Note how your sails have now been freed out a little bit further from the boat. So the wind, the, the sheets are being eased a bit more. Broad reach is a kite up, flying along, having a lovely time. Boat's flat. Note again, the sails are even further out now. And then we get into running. This is your potentially crash jibe area. The chances of your boom popping from one side to the other get very high, can be pretty dangerous. So because of this and the gap between there and there, anything beyond this point on a clipper boat, we put preventers on the sails to make sure that we can't get hurt because of this potential of being dangerous. Okay, and as I said, we can note that close haul, everything's in tight. As we go round away from the wind, we're freeing up our sails more and more and more. So that's the first thing of trim. Okay, a little bit of a quiz time. Do you need to get a yacht out of the water regularly? Multiple question. Yes. No, about once a year, never. You know, you don't really have to do it. There we go. We've got a couple of answers appearing on the chat. We've got lots of yeses, about once a year. We're getting lots of answers here. There's a once, yeah. 
So yeah, lots and lots of about once a year's. Perfect. So the answer is yes, you do have to bring it out regularly. And about once a year is a good option. You need to clean and repaint the underside with what we call antifile, as well as change your anodes. Okay, next little question. How would one change a bulb on a mast head? Pay someone else to do it? Go up on any halyard? Go up on two jib halyards? Don't bother. Lots of C's. That's exactly what we wanted to see. They're all C's. Brilliant. <laughs> Vincent says, pay somebody. <laughs> so does Glenn. He says, pay, but see if we have to do it ourselves. The answer is you can get somebody else to do it, but it is definitely two jib halyards. If you remember that picture of our spinnaker halyards, the sheets were, the, the sheaths were on the outside. If something goes wrong, you go the whole way down. Because the jib halyard sheaths had the line on the inside, if something happens to the sheath, you drop an inch and you're safe. Why two halyards? Well, back up for obvious reasons. Okay. Why should I change my anodes? They don't shine anymore, stops corrosion on the yacht. Everyone else says so. So the yard can charge me for new ones. That's it. Loads of bees. Perfect. Lots and lots and lots of bees. There's a corroded anode. So when that disappears, that's what it starts like. And then that's what it disappears to. So you can see how it gets eaten away quite severely. So that's why I say they don't shine anymore. Because when you get them new, they're nice and shiny. Then they go horrible. And eventually they just disappear altogether. And all you'll be left with is the two bolts that you bolted it on with. You don't want it to get to that stage. That's about as far as you want to go with them before changing them. Okay, so finishing up quickly. Okay. Any reading that you want to do prior to all of this, I can recommend the RA Day Comp, Cripper, uh, Comp Crew and Day Skipper books. They give you good basic information. Tom Cunliffe's book, The Complete Day Skipper, I think he's on edition seven at the moment because he updates them as things update. Again, it's a very, very nice, easy reading book. So this is a picture of the fifth edition, but I think it's the seventh edition, it's the latest one. And, and he, he speaks in nice layman terms. He doesn't try and complicate it. He's got a very nice way of writing. Okay, oh, there's the eighth edition for the Yacht Master version. That gets a bit more complicated than the Day Skipper version. But again, same idea. Okay, so that really is just scratching the surface. But it's a nice way to introduce the sessions. Nice and easy. Um, the names do become second nature. So if you start thinking about these names, and as you work with them more and more and more, they become second nature. Uh, if and when you do any sailing on a boat, it is a very good idea to get involved with the maintenance, all aspects of maintenance, because you can actually learn a hell of a lot. So if you're sailing with some friends, just ask them a few questions. When last of the boat antifouled? How often do you change your, uh, how often do you change your um, anodes? You know, and you can start learning. Start getting involved in it, it's a lot of fun. Okay. Um, I've put this here, if anybody has any queries or questions, that's not, oh, can I do this? That's, can I do that? It's kind of, okay, I've got a serious question about X or Y. Um, so you can get hold of us at wavy at wavysail.com. Um, that's my WhatsApp number if it's sort of very urgent, but we prefer an email. Um, 
And also, if anybody's got any suggestions during the course of the presentations, feedback is always good. Okay, so um, a nice little introduction, not terribly long, not terribly taxing, but it gets us in there. Uh, we've tested everything. We now know that the, the presentation is coming out. We know who are now late for presentations and who are early as well. So um, I hope you enjoyed the first one. They will do get they do get a little bit more complicated as we go into new So all the bits and pieces that can uh, the rules that we have to abide while we're out there. And that gets a little bit more complicated. And then the following week we'll start doing navigation and that gets a little bit more complicated. So I hope you enjoyed the first week. Please don't forget the UNICEF thing. We most appreciate and I know UNICEF would, and it's nice to try and keep things going. Any comments or questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and mention it to the group.